Coffee Break German, Lesson 18. Willkommen zurück zu Coffee Break German. Welcome back to Coffee Break German. Ich heiße Mark. Ich heiße Thomas. I'm here to learn German and Thomas is here to help us learn together. We are back with another lesson and in this lesson we're going to be looking at the theme of taking public transport. We'll be inquiring about times of buses and trains and finding out how to buy our tickets. So, Thomas, will we get straight into the lesson? Lass uns anfangen. Auf geht's! Wie üblich, ein bisschen Wiederholung. Okay, I'm going to try and work out what this means. Wie üblich is a phrase that we learned just at the end of the, the last lesson, I believe. Um, that means as usual. Like always, as usual. Yeah. And the second part you said? Ein bisschen Wiederholung. So ein bisschen is a little. Wiederholung. I know what wieder means. It's something again, doing something again. So the holung part, what does holung mean? Well, holen means to fetch, to get. So wiederholen is to fetch something again, to get something again. So is this a review by any to chance? To review, yes. Okay, so wiederholen could be to review something. Und wiederholung is the review. The review. Okay, also ein bisschen wiederholung. This time I'm going to give you some phrases to translate from English into German and then a few from German into English. Okay. Nummer eins. At what time does the church close? Okay, as usual, we'll give our listeners some time to think about this. So, at what time does the church close? In German word order, that would be at what time closes the church? So, um wie viel Uhr schließt die Kirche? Richtig. Um wie viel Uhr schließt die Kirche? Okay, next one. Nummer zwei. At what time does the supermarket open? So, would that one be um wie viel Uhr öffnet der Supermarkt? Perfekt. Um wie viel Uhr öffnet der Supermarkt? Okay. Nummer drei. The museum is open from 12 o'clock to 4 o'clock. So I'm going to try that one. Das Museum ist geöffnet von 12 Uhr bis 4 Uhr. Perfekt. Danke. Nummer 4. Do you have a map of the town? So I think that one's fairly straightforward. Haben Sie ein Stadtplan? Einen Stadtplan, ja. Oh, yeah, okay. It serves, it serves me right for saying it's fairly straightforward. It's einen Stadtplan and it's a, it's a masculine word. So it's ein Stadtplan and then haben Sie einen Stadtplan. Exactly. Okay. And you said you had some for me to translate from German into English too. Yes. The first one. Der Dom ist geöffnet zwischen 9 und 3 Uhr am Samstag. Now, if I remember back to the previous lesson when we were looking at uh, places in the town, I think Der Dom is the cathedral. Yeah. So the cathedral is open, and then you said zwischen... Neun und drei Uhr. So the cathedral is open between nine and three. Am Samstag. On Saturday. Very good. Does that mean this Saturday or on Saturdays? And generally is open on Saturdays between nine and three. Okay, so der Dom ist geöffnet zwischen 9 und 3 Uhr am Samstag. Next one. Well, the next one, the word order is going to be a little bit different, but the meaning is similar to the last one. Unter der Woche ist das Schwimmbad von 9 bis 9 geöffnet. Can we hear that one again? Unter der Woche ist das Schwimmbad von 9 bis 9 Uhr geöffnet.
So I think that means Unter der Woche is in the weekdays, the, the working week. The swimming pool, das Schwimmbad, is open from nine until nine. Exactly. So run through the, the word order of that again. Let's hear the whole thing. Unter der Woche, so du during, during the week, week, ist das Schwimmbad, is the swimming pool, von neun bis neun Uhr, from nine until nine, geöffnet, open. So literally in English, during the week, is the swimming pool from nine till nine open. Sehr gut. Unter der Woche ist das Schwimmbad von neun bis neun Uhr geöffnet. Maybe you noticed that the time phrase at the one sentence was at the end of the sentence and then the second one right at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And something happened with the verb, didn't it? Because the first sentence there was um, Der Dom ist geöffnet zwischen neun und drei am Samstag. And then in the second sentence you had Unter der Woche ist das Schwimmbad. So it wasn't das Schwimmbad ist geöffnet. And we also had the geöffnet right at the end of the sentence in the second one. So it's quite complicated. Let's hear the, the, the construction again. Unter der Woche ist das Schwimmbad von 9 bis 9 Uhr geöffnet. So ist and the subject, verb and subject, switch places. And the geöffnet goes right at the back of the sentence. Right to the end. Okay. Do you have one more translation question for me? Yeah, this time a little bit easier, but also something new. Können Sie mir eine Broschüre geben? Okay, so I know können Sie, that's can you. Können Sie, what was the next part? Mir. That's to me. Eine Broschüre. That's a brochure. We learned that in the tourist information office. And then geben. We already heard it, but not quite. Gibt es, is there. Mm -hmm. And geben means to give. So gibt es literally means it gives. Gives it. Gives, gives it. it. Okay. Um, so, can you give me a brochure? Yes, exactly. Okay, so geben is quite a useful word then, presumably. Can you give me all sorts of things? Yes, können Sie mir eine Karte geben? Können Sie mir einen Apfel geben? What's einen Apfel? The apple, der Apfel. Der Apfel. Right, I think it's time to get on with the lesson for today because we've been spending a little time on review there and of course there's always interesting questions that come out of the review. However, before we do that, we're going to be joined by Kirsten. And today Kirsten has got something a little different to share with us. We're going to be looking at an irregular verb, the verb sein, meaning to be. Over to you, Kirsten. Okay, grammar fans, the time has come to talk about the verb sein. It means to be, and it's one of the most commonly used verbs in the German language. Now, as far as irregular verbs go, this one's a tricky customer. But don't worry, you've been using some of the verb forms already, and the very fact that it is used so often means that you'll get many opportunities to practice it. There's not really a pattern to this verb at all, so I'll just take you through the forms one by one, starting, as usual, with the singular forms first. The first person singular form is Ich bin. See what I mean? How did we go from sein to Ich bin? Just another of the many mysteries of the German language. The second person singular is a little bit better. It's got the usual ST ending. Du bist. And the third person singular form is Er, sie, es, ist. Then we've got the plural endings. The first person plural form is wir sind. Then the second person plural again is different. It's ihr seid. And the third person plural is sie sind, just like the wir form. Finally, we've got the formal form, and it's the same as the third person plural, sie sind. Of course, I don't need to remind you by now that when you're writing those ones down, the formal sie is written with a capital, whereas the third person plural is written with a small s. Let's just run through those forms one after the other. Ich bin, du bist, er, sie, es, ist, wir sind, ihr seid, sie sind. And finally, the formal, sie sind. So there you have it, the conjugation of the verb sein. Now it's back to Thomas and Mark in the studio.
thanks to Kirsten for that grammar guru section and we'll now all be able to conjugate the verb sein. Let's turn now to the main topic for this week's lesson and that is getting around using public transport. The first phrase that we're going to look at today is a phrase that we were talking about just before we started recording this lesson and it's a very useful phrase. Thomas, let's hear this particular phrase. Können Sie mir bitte sagen? So, we should already recognise some of that phrase because we've just heard it. Können Sie, can you, mir, to me, bitte, please. And then the last word was? Sagen. Sagen is? To tell. To tell. So the whole phrase means? Can you please tell me? Können Sie mir bitte sagen? Können Sie mir bitte sagen? Okay, and we can follow this question with pretty much any other question. So, can you tell me when the church opens? Können Sie mir bitte sagen, wann die Kirche öffnet? Now listen carefully to the word order in that sentence. And this is good news. Listen to this. Can you tell me? Können Sie mir bitte sagen? When the church opens. Wann die Kirche öffnet. So, when... Wann the church die Kirche opens. Öffnet. It's exactly the same word order as in English. And I was quite delighted when Thomas told me about this earlier because the word order thing is really confusing me a little, I have to say. So let's try using this phrase with some different questions. Can you please tell me where the station is? Können Sie mir bitte sagen, wo der Bahnhof ist? So that's können Sie mir bitte sagen, Wo der Bahnhof ist. Wo der Bahnhof ist. So where the station is. And we could say, can you please tell me when the post office opens? Um wie viel Uhr die Post öffnet. So the whole phrase would be, können Sie mir bitte sagen, um wie viel Uhr die Post öffnet. Um wie viel Uhr die Post öffnet. So again, um wie viel Uhr is the at what time, at which time, or at which hour, literally. Um wie viel Uhr die Post öffnet. Die Post, the post office. The post office, okay. Um, what about if we're taking this concept and moving it on a little bit, what about talking about when the train arrives? Can you please tell me when the train arrives? To arrive is ankommen. Ankommen. So the sentence would be, können Sie mir bitte sagen... Wann der Zug ankommt. Let's hear the word for the train. Der Zug. Der Zug. Der Zug. So the whole phrase would be, can you please tell me when the train arrives? Können Sie mir bitte sagen, wann der Zug ankommt? And this word for when is... Wann. Wann. And so when is really interchangeable with at what time. Wann, um wie viel Uhr, means the same. Okay. What is the word for to depart? Abfahren, at least when it comes to transport with wheels. So cars and trains and... Buses, yes. Metro, presumably trams also. Yeah, because oh. fahren means to drive, literally. Oh, okay. So abfahren, what does the ab part mean? It has various meanings, but in this context, it would mean away, so driving away. Okay, so just coming back to this question, können Sie mir bitte sagen, um wie viel Uhr der Zug abfährt? Can I just hear that verb again at the end there? Um wie viel Uhr der Zug abfährt? Abfährt. So am I thinking that that's slightly irregular? It's not like abfahrt, it's abfährt. Abfährt, yeah. Okay, um, we'll maybe come back to that another time, but let's just think about it for the time being as um wie viel Uhr der Zug abfährt. Abfährt. Okay, how would I say at what time does the train for Munich leave? The word for to or for is nach in German. Nach. Nach. Okay, quite tricky to say. Um Maybe not so much for Scottish people, but maybe for some of our listeners, nach. Nach, nach München, for example. Okay, so 
where do I put that in the sentence? At what time does the train for Munich leave? Können Sie mir bitte sagen, um wie viel Uhr der Zug nach München abfährt? Okay, I'm going to try saying this. Können Sie mir bitte sagen, um wie viel Uhr der Zug nach München abfährt? Ganz genau. Okay. And if that's to Munich, what would the train from Cologne be? Von Köln. Oh, that's a new a new town for us. What's Cologne in, in German? Köln. 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 Okay, so können Sie mir bitte sagen, um wie viel Uhr der Zug von Köln ankommt? Richtig. Okay. Now let's practice this a little bit and I give you four phrases and you try to translate them. Okay. Can you please tell me when the train from Cologne arrives? So again, as usual, wie üblich, I'll give the listeners some time to think about this. Let's hear the sentence again. Can you please tell me when the train from Cologne arrives? So I think that's Können Sie mir bitte sagen, wann der Zug von Köln ankommt? Richtig. Okay, Nummer zwei. Can you please tell me when the train to Marburg departs? So, I think that's, können Sie mir bitte sagen, wann der Zug nach Marburg Marburg abfährt abfährt sehr gut können Sie mir bitte sagen wann der Zug nach Marburg abfährt können Sie mir bitte sagen wann der Zug nach Marburg abfährt number three and a new word the word for bus is der Bus das ist ganz leicht that's quite easy it's very easy ganz genau ja yeah, so der Bus der Bus so give me the, the sentence to translate. Can you please tell me when the bus from Vienna arrives? Können Sie mir bitte sagen, wann der Bus von Wien ankommt? Exactly. Last one. Can you please tell me when the bus to Graz departs? Können Sie mir bitte sagen, wann der Bus nach Graz abfährt? Perfect, Mark. Excellent. Now, so far, we've only learned to ask the questions. We've not learned any answers. Give us one answer here just before we finish off for today, and that'll give us something to think about for next time. So how would I say, for example, the bus arrives at two o'clock? In fact, can I, can I try this myself? Yes, of course. Der Bus ankommt um zwei Uhr. Almost. But here German gets complicated again. Oh dear, okay. Der Bus kommt um zwei Uhr an. Whoa, so we've taken ankommen and taken off the an and stuck it at the end of the sentence. Exactly. I won't ask why, because <laughs> it's too near the end of the lesson. So, um, der Zug or der Bus kommt... Um zwei Uhr, that's the time, at two o'clock, an. Der Bus kommt um zwei Uhr an. Okay, I think we're going to leave it there for today. But just before we finish, there's time to go over to Julia, our cultural correspondent, who's going to be telling us about something that she has seen wandering around a particular German city. Hallo Marc, servus Thomas und hallo an alle unsere Coffee Break German Zuhörer. Ich bin's wieder, Julia, eure Kulturreporterin. In this episode, Thomas taught you handy phrases to get around the town and to understand directions. And I'm now going to tell you about a couple of things you may come across when walking through a German town. I'm talking about traffic lights for pedestrians. Of course, at every corner, there is a little green or red man showing you whether to walk or stop. But they will look different when you are in East Berlin or when you are in the western part of town. Of course, that holds true for former East and West Germany as well. Whereas the Western Ampelmann, meaning 
traffic light man, looks rather neutral and standard. His eastern cousin is a bit more individual. He wears a hat and shirt and looks quite cute. Lately, this eastern Ampelmann has become a kind of cult object. And many clothes and bags, as well as kitchenware, are produced with its picture on them. And while we are talking about Ampelmännchen, there is one subject which we cannot leave out. And it's something which foreigners find a little strange about Germans, and indeed Austrians and Swiss people too. It's the fact that when the red Ampelmann is showing, we are very obedient, we wait. We wait even if there's nothing coming and we wait patiently along with all the other people standing at the crossing until the green Ampelmann appears. Then and only then do we cross the road. It may seem a bit strange but it's just the way it is. Of course it's really to make sure we are giving a good impression to any children who may be waiting to cross with their parents. But just be aware of this little rule. Okay, it's time for me to hand you back to Thomas and Mark in the studio. Bis zum nächsten Mal, Freunde. Vielen Dank, Julia. Okay, we've covered quite a bit today. And if, like me, you're finding it a little bit challenging dealing with all this word order complicated stuff, you can use our notes, the additional materials for Coffee Break German. You can head over to coffeebreakgerman.com and find all these materials there. Please leave a review or post a comment while you're on our site. And you can also check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash coffeebreakgerman. Come and join the community of learners from all around the world. Okay, das reicht für heute. Bis zum nächsten Mal. Und tschüss. This is a production of the Radiolingua Network. Find out more at radiolingua.com.